to February, everybody. It's so good to have you here on the Mastering Social Media for Schools podcast. Your host, Andrea, of course. Um, and I am so excited for you to meet today's guest. Uh, Anandita Anam is the communication specialist at Okano Unified School District in Wisconsin, a, a district of about 1,200 students. Um, a couple years ago, they added the communication specialist role, and she has done an amazing job. She has a very diverse background, um, has a couple master's degrees, and she is from India. Um, she's brought all of her knowledge and experiences prior to working with the school to the school and has made a phenomenal impact. Um, she uses Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, um, really gets a lot of stories from her staff and she'll talk about how she builds those relationships. Um, we're gonna talk about how she uses emojis and her writing style into gaining engagement. Um, and then has some great advice just for uh, being from a different culture um, and getting into a community and how to build some of those relationships and uh, bringing some of the strengths and advantages, you know, that she has to her school, which I think is awesome. So I'm um, so excited. Anandita is also a, a great and valuable member of our membership community that we have here at Social School for EDU. Um, and she's going to share a little bit about how that has made her job a lot easier um, and given her ideas that really, truly work. Um, and so so that's been helpful as well. So, um, you know, we're in the month of love and we're spreading the love. And if you are listening to this podcast right now, which of course you are, if you're, if you've got us on, um, would you share this podcast with someone that could use this experience, this inspiration, this knowledge, um, you know, share this podcast with them. So please shoot it off in a tweet or direct message them or, um, you know, email it off to po folks in your network. Um, but we're really looking to um, spread the love and spread the joy of social media storytelling for schools in 2022. And you are a big part of that. So if you just want to share this with someone that could use it, I would be ever so grateful. So now let's get started with today's episode. All right, today's K-12 PR tip is all about Instagram accounts that are maybe associated with your school, but you have nothing to do with them and they are very inappropriate. Now we get this question all the time from school communicators really around the world is, oh my gosh, somebody set up an Instagram account with our logo as the profile picture and they're really posting awful inappropriate things on it. Um, maybe it's a, you know, inappropriate relationships, um, pictures of kids sleeping in class, um, you know, ship or dip with this, if it's a relationship or they should break up. I mean, there's just all sorts of things that happen out there on Instagram, a lot of kids playing around. And uh, school communicators often ask, well, what can I do about these accounts? Um, first of all, you can report the page. So you can either say it's impersonating um, or it's bullying people. You know, you can report the page as your district account, as your personal account. Um, that's number one. Now, it doesn't happen overnight that those pages get shut down or maybe they won't get shut down at all, but that's your first mode of defense. Second, get other people to report it. So if you don't want to necessarily spread it all over your school, at least maybe talk to your staff members and ask them, hey, we have this page that's going on that has some bad stuff on it. Can you please, if you have an Instagram page, go on and make sure to report the page. The more reports that Instagram gets, then the more likely they are to take some action. Now, the third thing that, uh, third piece of advice that I have is look at the page and look who's following the page, what other accounts are actually following the page. Usually when you look at that list of followers, you're gonna identify some of your students. My best advice is play a little bit of detective and maybe talk to some of those students to see if you can identify who is running that page. Sometimes just a threat of, hey, we're getting the police involved because this is inappropriate, you know, um, photos that are being shared on here. This is using our copyrighted uh, logo. Um, so this page really can't exist. Even if you mention that to some of the followers, even if they don't tell you who's running the page, they may end up getting that information back to them and the page might go away. So um, you can obviously also 
talk to your um, police department because in some cases there may be some steps that they can take as well. Uh, but I just wanted to really walk through uh, some of those recommended steps of, I found this page, what are my options? Those are the best things. Report it, get other people to report it, and then try to do some investigation of your own to see who follows the page. I hope this tip helps. I hope you don't have to worry about it. Um, and now let's get on to our interview with Anandita Anam. Hello, Anandita. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, Andrea. How are you? I am really, really good. I'm so excited. We, we've we planned this months ago for you to get on the podcast, and now we're finally making it happen here in 2022. Absolutely. I'm excited as well. Happy New Year. Yes. Happy New Year to you. So, Anandita, for those who don't know who you are, can, can you kind of share your background and then your role as communication specialist for Oconto Unified School District in Wisconsin? So I'm from India and I did my master's in political science and I then I did my second master's in communications and PR and I briefly worked with a lot of newspapers uh, covering different kind of beats like uh, lifestyle, education and technology and then I was involved with uh, another K-12 uh, e-learning company uh, for quite some time and got a an idea about how the you know education business works in so many different ways, and then I came uh, to states in 2015, and I you know uh, volunteered with a lot of nonprofits and South Asian organization, you know working on the social media channels and reaching out uh, to uh, various audience, and then I was also the secretary for Wisconsin Dance Council, so I was the one who was managing all the social media, the websites. In 2020, I started working with Okanda Unified School District as a communication specialist, and I oversee their outreach and diversity and uh, social media management and marketing. It has been one hell of a journey, and I'm enjoying every bit of it. I love it. So were all of your degrees in, uh, did you do all of that work in India? Yes, I did. Yes. Okay, awesome. Um, and so you've been in the U.S. since 2015, you've had a lot of different experiences, and then ended up landing this role just like a couple years ago then? Yes, yes. Okay. Directly working with the school, yeah. It's, it was a new one for me, but I've always been involved with a lot of educational programs, so it was not a very difficult task for me when I took up the assignment in school. So was that a new role at the school district, or was that an existing role? No, they started this position for the first time. Our superintendent came from Chicago and uh, she thought like, you know, something is missing in the school district and she really needs to amp up those things because randomly people were posting and it didn't make any sense. There was no, uh, you know, management of the uh, social media. So, you know, there was a lot of, uh, you know, feeling in people that they are not being recognized the way they should be. So she just wanted to uh, streamline the entire process and she was looking for someone uh, for quite some time. And uh, when I saw this opportunity, I just applied. We had a couple of, you know, back and forth and then she was very pleased to have me on board. That's awesome. Yeah, because you have such a unique um, background. Uh, how did you hear about the opening? So it was like, uh, you know, published on their Facebook and somebody shared on uh, their wall and I came to know about it because it wasn't there, like on the job forums as we see, but uh, because the place where we stay doesn't have too many opportunities to work in the school offices, but this was one unique one. And when I saw that on somebody's wall and I applied and then we went from there. And well, and indeed, that speaks perfectly to the power of social media and why you don't just post right. post jobs like on LinkedIn where people are looking because you weren't even really looking for a position. Right. Yeah, you were you were working somewhere else. But because you saw it on somebody else's wall, you ended up applying. I love it. I love it. So, OK, so you're a communication specialist. You do a lot of different things uh, for the district. How does social media fit into your role? I am a performing artist as well. So I have, you know, since uh, the age of four, I have been learning. So, you know, basically we are communicating with the audience, you know, per se, it's a live audience. So I know the power of communication. If you are not able to connect with your audience, whether it be a performing art or anything, you are basically making no statement. 
So social media is something I always rely upon heavily for all my work. And I think it's one of the best tools to promote the positive stories you have. If you have an extrovert character, why not to use it and you use it in this way that, that spreads positivity. So I think social media fits into my role, my life. And, you know, I also want to start a lifestyle blog very soon so i am all over the social media awesome so what specifically and how do you manage it for the school district so i break down the task uh, as per the priority and deadline and your social media for edu has been such a big help for me when you say that you know ask for the deadline ask for the dates and that's how i started you know i had idea about the school but your forum really really helped me to like organize things in a way how to celebrate each small story and i'm a journalist so i go all around the school district looking for stories and then i prioritize as per if there's something going on like celebrating some special day so my stories for that week would focus on that and then if it's something like a dull day on weekends i prioritize other pictures which have not been used before on those slow days that's how i uh, chalk out my you know uh, things but you know in communications world so something can come up suddenly. So you have to create a space for that. And then streamlining this process that we cannot have too many posts going on social media. That is very important to tell the teachers without hurting their sentiments. We know we all get very attached to our stories. We all feel that it's very important to go, but we need to see how the algorithm works. And then that's how I you know, manage my things. I'm an old school, so I write my notes and okay that's how i go yeah perfect and how i i i failed to ask this before how big is Ocanto unified school district like how many students k through 12 so we don't have uh you know a huge student number but it is close to 1200 students as of now uh so that's a pretty good one and the enrollment is up up uh you know it's going up because of our engagement and people are getting to know more about our school through the social media so you know communication is one of the main way to reach out to our potential parents. So sure. Yeah. And, and so you're on Facebook. And then what other channels do you have for the district? Yeah, so I started the Instagram, I launched the Instagram. And uh, we also have a Twitter channel, uh, in which we are trying to increase our subscribers. Uh, and TikTok is another platform I'm experimenting on. And LinkedIn, we would be starting uh, shortly. Okay. So as of now, we are on Facebook, we have a district website, we have a, you know, um, Instagram channel, and we are on Twitter as of now. Yeah. Okay. And we have also okay. a YouTube channel too. So where we post all the videos for uh, later viewing. Okay. Yeah. And YouTube is kind of a, I call that less of social media because there's not as much social engagement right. going on, but it is a great spot to put those videos. Um, okay. And then you manage all of those pages for the entire district. Like it's a district presence. Do you have any school specific pages or is it just all celebrated on the district channels? Yes, no, we don't have, you know, we had a lot of multiple pages, but our superintendent said that it's too difficult to manage all of them. But we have some kind of sports page, which is managed by the teams. Sure. But sure. otherwise, for the district news, we have one specific page, which covers all the three schools. So it, it really helps to like, you know, streamline the process. And for now, it is doing very well. And we didn't feel the need to increase that. Uh, but if we have more number of students coming up, then we will just kind of, you know, again divide the channels yeah and you've really grown your presence since you started right do you have some numbers do you offhand do you know um i'm looking at your page you've got about 2374 people that follow just your facebook page now which is great do you know what it was when you started uh, the numbers were somewhere around 1600 something. Okay. And within a year or from 2020, when the COVID hit till today, uh, we have, uh, you know, a page follow of 2300 and, you know, you know, some people just follow us, but they have not liked the page that makes our page stand at somewhat around 2400. So somewhat around 600 to 700 followers, organic followers. We have never spent a penny behind, uh, you know, post engagements or any paid promotions so it's only me who works and you know use the social media stories to gain the followers yeah that's yeah. great so authentic yeah. stories um you know you're gonna get those followers it's a smaller community 1200 students there um so that's powerful so 
how do you and Adita having the three schools, how do you stay on top of all the great stories to celebrate on social media? Do, do staff send those to you? Are you going out to the buildings? Like, how are you getting those stories? So when I came, you know, a lot of staff was sending me the pictures, but you know, but I wasn't happy with the, you know, the, the quality of the pictures. Okay. They were really blurry or not, it was not telling any story. It was more like a run of the mills pictures I was getting. So I said, it's important that we, I go and I introduce myself that I'm here to help you celebrate because, you know, there are different kinds of teachers who are not pro social media. There are people who forget to click the pictures of the kids. They have perfect stories but they don't know how to publish them. And then there are teachers who are good photographers. So I was connecting in person to every one of them and, you know, telling them that, you know what, you can send me pictures whenever you feel like, you can send me on Facebook Messenger, you can send me on email, whatever platform works for you, I am there for you. That assurance, I think, creates those connections uh, in person. And then I go sometimes myself, click my pictures. Last year, we did a presentation telling the teachers that you know use your feet instead of zooming the pictures so that you get a better picture and if you have stories like i did today i am right now in nevada but i have to like keep my channels going on so i told them that this is the first monday and tell me you can get creative send me the pictures so you, you can see that one of our teacher posted one with a snowman so yeah you can get creative so once they understand your idea that what is social media worthy and what is not you get good pictures, you get good stories. They invite me like somebody from the Native American have come to say something. Uh, why don't you come in Andy, and do things? So I take my notes like an old school so that, you know, we are respecting every tradition. So these are very important that we tell the story in the right way with the right kind of pictures and right kind of, you know, uh, district approach. And that does the trick. Yeah. So uh, you were a new position. Sometimes people will be like, well, it's her job to do that, but you, you can't be everywhere. So you really kind of focused on building those relationships. That was so important. And that's hard. It has been challenging in COVID times, um, but you've been able to do it. And now like right right the second you're not in the in the district you're still working and so you're able to get that and and obviously we at social school for edu we serve almost 100 school districts across the country we're also not physically there um but we can get the content from from the staff members and you can train them with a little bit of help on how to take good pictures um that that uh, we're hoping and adita that some of your staff maybe got a new phone for christmas because a new phone usually means a better camera, right? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Sometimes you just want to say, can you try to take that picture without like moving while you're doing it? But um, um, we'll, uh, it's just one step at a time, one picture at a time, one story at a time. So um, I think looking at your page, you do a great job of sprinkling in emojis with your posts, right? So um you know, what's your, what's your kind of secret and how you're writing out those posts to kind of encourage that engagement and getting that, that interaction. That's just not just, just words, but the, with the emojis. So I feel like when I, as a personal, as an audience, when I look at the, you know, post, when I see just big bold letters, I do not engage, but using those emojis, brightens up that pose that you know tells at a glance that this post is more lively or cheerful and if it's like holiday you're putting santas and this you know it just makes it brighter um and like we just did one on our uh, it director so i did not start the hi you know this is thursday throwback i, I kind of connected all of the all of them together i wanted to recognize him i wanted to make an end of the year post as well as i wanted to do a thursday throwback uh, because he was our he saw, was our alumni so I connected all and I, I started my line with, uh, can you think of a day when your internet is not working or you're, you have troubleshooting, who do you go back to? And then I said that we need to sh do a shout out for a person, you know, uh, who does all the things behind the scenes so that everything keeps going. And then I got a picture of him from his yearbook in 1987 or 1988. So that all the three stories combined we got a great engagement for that post. If you scroll down on our page, you'll see uh, Mr. Scott Boucher. He's our IT director. And how we celebrated him like a Thursday throwback, end of the year post, as well as 
telling the people that we need to appreciate these people who are behind the scenes who may not be directly involved with your kids, but they are ensuring that the process is smooth line, especially in an era where there was COVID. They were the ones who made it sure that your education is being propagated the way it should be. So that's how I connect dots and make it cheerful by using emojis and making a brand statement like when I use a heart like go you know yellow and blue those are our colors so I think those are the ways we connect and make it lively and playful I love it so yeah we've got this this throwback Thursday uh, photo um, I can uh, share that uh, in the show notes for you guys but you can you can glance through um, her Facebook page as well you, you had a nice post on January 1st of a staff spot spotlight of Andrew and you had some um, cute cute ways of putting some uh, like a little face on there as well so um, just a lot of creativity creative ways uh, and you got to stick out right you got if if you want to catch people's attention um you need to kind of stand out and so i love how you're um how you're doing that that's awesome um now you talked a little bit about it you've been part of our membership group um how, about how long have you been part of that about a year is that right uh, I think more than that. Okay. When I joined, the school has already joined your group, but they, they didn't have the manpower to like use those ideas for, on a day-to-day -day basis. So they said, why don't you look at this, uh, you know, and, and I loved it. Seriously, I loved it. How creative people could be. And Andrea, you yourself is so creative and so is your team. So thank you for everything you do. You guys do. Yeah. yeah. So, so how has that how membership has group kind of been helpful to you, to you in your role? Um, you know, anything specific that just has made things easier or, um, you know, spot to get your questions answered or, I mean, you've described it a little bit, but. Absolutely. Uh, it has really helped me to like look at things from so many different perspectives. Uh, you, you told me about the stickers, uh, you know, why don't you use those stickers and put it on your door? We implemented that. Our you know, uh, subscri subscribers went up. Uh, you, t you, there was one post by a school where the superintendent came to the building and he was reading a story. We did it differently. We give it a twist, and you know, it was an anti-bullying month. So I told my superintendent, "Why don't you come and read a story about anti-bullying to our kids?" And she did it for all these grades in ele elementary school. That was a big hit. Um, we also um, did, uh, you know, um, the staff spotlight. How you are telling people that, you know, your staff need to be recognized. So, uh, and another thing during COVID, uh, you showed us some pictures, you know, you shared some pictures of how we are going into empty classrooms and, you know, showing the teachers uh, working behind the scenes till night. That was one of the hit way to tell the audience and our community that, you know, we are working 24 seven to ensure that, you know, we are doing the best for our students. And that was really well received. And the, one of the biggest success was our um, uh, referendum, which passed without, you know, with a breeze. Yeah, it was amazing. It was amazing. I give credit to your channel for helping me do that. Yeah. Well, what's so helpful is when you see what's working at other in other districts, you don't have to like recreate the wheel. Uh, but in some cases, like you did your reading with anti-bullying month, you got the idea, but then you, you made it better. You, you kind of modified and morphed it uh, to, to what you needed. Um, and we're, we are better together. I think it's just awesome. Um, and it's certainly something when I started in Indita, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to have all the answers. I need to be an expert in everything. No. We collectively uh, create a, a community and we have almost 300 schools that are part of it. Um, and, and by the way, membership's open. So if you are considering like, oh my gosh, I'm not sure if you want to make social media easier for you, um, you know, maybe uh, drive some of the fun back into uh, your role and know that it's going to move the needle uh, for your district, you may want to uh, consider it. And we've got public schools, we've got private schools, we've got charter schools, uh, Catholic schools, all sorts of schools in there um, that can be really helpful. So. That's awesome. Um, now, you just mentioned in passing and in detail, which is very important. So you had a referendum. Was that last year? This year. Yeah. Yeah. Last year. Right. In 2021. Yes. And our high school was closed for some time. We had some angry parents here and there. But, you know, when you know the community well and you know you are showing the sneak peek and how hard we are trying but through your social media most of them are on facebook are that age group is there on facebook so when we did that i think it was 
they were able to understand our point that you know there is a problem we are facing it the way and managing it the best possible way and we have just the best interest in our heart for the kids so i think they got the point and we passed uh, the referendum without any hitch so we i think that is that was commendable that shows the power of communication that shows the power of telling a positive story through district channels and uh, you know when we make feel people feel appreciated we may you know make them feel connected I think that does the trick and hands down uh, I'll again and again say that your uh, you know uh, company is helping so many people in their jobs with your your you know uh, question of the week and you know uh, this and that we get so many good entries and you know everybody looking at this podcast or hearing this podcast need to join uh, your uh, you know it's it's not no advertisement but I can I have reaped the benefits and from that experience it's coming that you have been really valuable uh, for my job. Oh, thank you. That is why I love what I get to do and I get to meet awesome people like you. Okay, Anadita, this is off of my um, uh, planned questions, but I think it's important because um, you're from India and, um, you know, a different kind of a different culture and there's lots of different things. And so you coming into this role being new um, and then just acclimating yourself with the staff and getting connected, um, you know, you probably had some unique challenges um, with that. Any advice for those listening that maybe feel that way in their role? Because in many cases, maybe they haven't done this job, just like you didn't specifically do this job when you got started. Um, but were, were there were there any lessons learned or things that you could share in hindsight to help somebody that might be in a similar situation? Absolutely. So like when I came from India, we have been into a British system. So when I came, the dialects were very different. You know, the ways of putting a statement or a proverb is very different from what they are used to. Like I'm giving you one simple example, learned and learnt. In British English, we use it L-E-A-R-N-T. Here you are, you are using L-E-A-R-N-E-D. So they, these were small challenges teachers were pointing out to me that, Andy, you made a mistake here. I said, I didn't make a mistake. It is also acceptable, but not in American setup. So I had to like, you know, see the trending hashtags and trending language. I had to do my homework. So I, when I had a free time, I used to go to different school pages and see how the veteran communicators are working on their channels and what are the languages they're using? What are the fancy words they're using? Like twinning is winning those kind of things and then using it to day to day work and you know telling the teachers that you know you can do like this you can do like that i saw it somewhere i saw this on another school districts that helped me to grow so i think doing the homework whenever you have free time and updating your skills we, that's just what you said that we don't know all we need support we need collaboration so i think that's the way to grow we have some you know expertise coming from our country but you know every culture is different so that is important when we are working about the diversity programs and stuff uh you know you know just develop yourself you know just don't say that i know it all it's, it's an evolving process so that's yeah, how I that's do. good advice for everybody because we we don't know it all especially when you think when you see hand signals these kids like really right. you have to you never know what it means um and adita how many languages do you speak i speak three languages three so um i just think that's amazing um it's a whole level of you know beyond me um and i just think about the how what a big advantage you give you know your school district having uh you know a diverse background being able to bring that to the school being in a communications role um making sure that everybody listening to um if you feel like you don't exactly fit in think about all of the advantages that brings and really lean into that because i'm sure there's been times and there is with everybody where you have self-doubt um, but being able to persevere and then being able to see what you've been able to accomplish in Indita for Ocanto is amazing. And uh, I, I'm very proud of all of the efforts uh, that you've done there. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Andrea. Yes. So as we kind of wrap up, what would be your best social media tip to share with our listeners? 
I always focus on know your community well, how many kind of demographics you have, what kind of students you're getting. You may have certain kind of population, but you may see a quick shift. Maybe a company has hired some more people from, from other places. Their kids are coming. So you need to be in a position where you can make these changes quickly. Uh, like if you have a lot of Hispanic kids coming up. So you need to have a translator in, in place so that you, know, you can interact with the kids' parents and make them understand what exactly they need to do. So this is very, very important. And second thing is when you are posting someone to up the algorithm, please ask some of your teachers and, uh, to you know, like the post then and there. If they're not there, you do it yourself from your personal profile. It's important to have a better visibility when you post that picture. Otherwise, you know, it might not get any likes for quite some time and then the algorithm will go down. So yeah. that is one of the tips I wanted to share with you guys. Awesome. So yes, know your community well and then make sure there's some interaction. So even if it's, hey, I think all social media managers can relate to be like, oh, I posted something. Now I got to log in as myself, you know, change it over so that I can interact and answer the question. And then you might be going back in as the school to respond back to them to say, oh, that's great or whatever. Um, we've all been there. It's all good. But uh but getting the, the staff uh, involved um, will help increase the, the, the reach. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. So, so that's awesome. So Anandita, if our folks want to stay connected to you, what is the best way? Can they follow you out there on social media or an email address or what, what do you want to share? Absolutely. You can follow me on LinkedIn. I'm, I have my email, uh, and we can share with you guys. Okay. Uh, I, have, okay. I have my personal email, which is my first name, and 200 at gmail.com. That's one of the email you can. Uh, I, you can also send me a friend request on Facebook. You can follow our page. Uh, so I'm on WhatsApp. So people using WhatsApp could use me there. You know, I, I'm on Instagram. So wherever you want me, you can follow me. Awesome. I'll make sure to put your LinkedIn and then I'll, put, I'll also add in your personal email address there. And then, yes, check out the uh, Okano Unified School District, their social media pages. Get inspired. If you've got additional questions about the uh, membership group that she talked about, certainly let us know. Um, if you wish social media was easier, wishing is not going to help you. But I think our membership group might um, because there's awesome people in there like Anandita. Um, thank you so much for spending time with us today. I really appreciate you sharing all of your great uh, experiences with our listeners. It's an honor to be here. Thank you for inviting me over. Thank you, Andy. I appreciate yes. it. All right, everybody. We'll we'll list, we'll uh, tune in next week. We'll have another fabulous guest. Actually, I think I'll be hosting, talking about uh, everything that we love to see on social media because next week is February 14th. So um, that will be great. We will see you then. Um, and until then, you guys keep telling those wonderful stories. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone.